Hi, it's Paul Anderson. Welcome to Disciplinary Core Idea PS3C. This is on the relationship between energy and forces. And this model right here is Newton's cradle. And what will happen is as we release this ball, as long as they all have the same mass, the energy will be transferred through them. And it will just move back and forth until eventually that energy ends up in sound and heat. And so when objects are touching, or even when they're not touching, they can exert forces on one another and sometimes transfer energy. And so in review, what are some of the interaction forces? We can have interaction forces when objects are touching, like these objects right here. There's going to be an electromagnetic force between the two. It's keeping one on top of the other. And as we slide one on top of the other, it's going to generate a frictional force. And that energy can eventually be transferred into heat. But objects, remember, don't have to necessarily be touching to exert forces on one another. And that's because of what are called fields. We could have gravitational fields, magnetic, or even electric fields. And as we move those objects, we're moving the energy within the field as well. And so let's look at these two objects, the Earth and an apple. There's going to be a gravitational field between the apple and the Earth. And if we were to raise that apple, we would change that field within this force. And so we would really store potential energy within that apple. And so what we can do is look through a lot of different scenarios. And if we understand what's going on in fields, we can see where that energy is being transferred. And so let's look at this one. For example, if we have a simple pendulum, as it's frozen in time, we've got a certain amount of potential energy. And that's due to this field, this gravitational field underneath it between the pendulum and the earth. And as we release it, it converts some of that energy into kinetic energy or energy of motion. And then it stores some of that as potential energy as well. Or if we were to look at a bungee jumper, why does a bungee, bungee jumper fall? It's due to these fields, gravitational fields that are pulling it down. But we're converting some of that energy as it falls down into tensional energy of the bungee. That's why it doesn't fall forever. It stores energy in that bungee and then it uses some of that energy to move them up again. Or if we were to look at magnetic fields, this gyroscopic magnet seems to be defying gravity, but that's because there are also magnetic fields in here. And so we have a, po or a north side of the magnet on this side and a north side of this large magnet, and so it keeps it kind of levitating above ground. So how do you teach this in school? In the lower elementary grades, we want to get this idea across that if you push on something, you can give a velocity or speed to that. And the more we push, the greater force we give it, then the greater the speed is going to be. Next thing that you should let them know is that the faster a speed when we have a collision equals more change. And so if we were to throw this red ball against a wall at a low speed, it's not going to damage it much. But if we throw it at a faster speed or even a faster speed, we're going to have more change to that object. As you move up in elementary school, then we want to talk about contact forces changing motion. In other words, when we have this object on top of this object, as we slide one past another, we're going to start to convert some of that movement into energy. And that's a frictional force that's opposing that motion. But if we drop motion down, the reason it doesn't fall through that object is because there's going to be electromagnetic forces between. But remember, we can have distant forces that are applying on different objects as well. And so that spinning gyroscopic magnet, the reason it is able to levitate is there's going to be a magnetic force between these two northern poles of the magnet. As we move into the middle school, then we want to ta start talking about the interactions causing transfer between objects or energy transfer. And so there's a gravitational field between the apple and the earth. And as we raise that apple, we're really changing the force of that field or the energy contained within that field. So we're storing energy in the apple, which we could return as it falls to earth. Um, likewise, when we're in middle school, we should also add the idea of magnets and and charges. And so if we have two magnets and they have opposing um, poles, there's going to be an attractive force between these two. Likewise, if we have two charges that have the same charge, there's going to be opposition and, and it's going to repel each other. And if we have attracting charges or, or unequal charges, there's going to be an attractive force between the two. As we move into high school, we really want to start to quantify that a little bit. And so when we move objects, when we change their position, we can really change their energy. And so it, be it magnetic, gravitational, or electric fields, as we move objects, the field energy is going to change. And so the energy within this field changes, and objects are going to tend to move along their easiest path. In other words, if we have two objects that are attracted to one another, they're going to move towards each other. They're going to move in, in a way that can reduce the amount of field energy. 
Likewise, if we have two magnetic poles that are going to oppose each other, they're going to move away from each other, and that's going to lessen that field energy as well. Now, it's not as simple as that. Prior motion and forces can affect the actual direction of motion as well. But that's the interaction between forces and energy. You really want to get your students using this idea of fields to explain why objects interact with one another when they're not touching, but I hope that was helpful.